This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're just going to go through now and just look at some issues that companies should go through and consider when one is buying the other. Okay, so terminology that, that we need to get used to, and I think I may have touched upon it in the, in the previous video, is that you've got company A, which is the predator company, and that predator company is looking to go through there and acquire the target company. Okay, so it is making an acquisition. So it's looking to acquire the target company, isn't it? That's if you like it, its investment decision. It is looking to go through there and invest within another business that is its project to go through there and increase the wealth of the predator shareholders isn't it okay because by making that acquisition they will make them more wealthy as the target will generate more earnings if it generates more earnings it generates more cash flow and it therefore generates more wealth doesn't it okay uh, however you know you can, you can use various examples uh, you can use the example of facebook uh, as the predator uh, acquiring the target WhatsApp. Okay, you can also go through as well and think about it. It's a long time ago, but it's a very useful case study if ever you want to get interested in it. Uh, is looking at the acquisition of Cadbury's, a UK chocolate business, uh, was the target company, and the predator company was the US business Kraft. Uh, and then uh, at the moment, as, as I record these, you know, in the middle of, I think it's 2017, I think we are, uh, you've got at the moment uh, a US paint company called PPG. Uh, is looking to go through there and acquire another business to expand its global portfolio. And that's a Dutch business, which is called Axo Nobel. Okay, uh, so PPG being the predator, Axo Nobel being the target. Uh, of these acquisitions that we mentioned, Kraft's acquisition of Cadbury's was quite a hostile takeover. Uh, PPG's acquisition of Axo Nobel is quite interesting because Axo Nobel's Management, the directors keep on repelling and repealing the offers uh, by PPG, uh, saying that the, the offer that is being made is not worthwhile. It doesn't value the company correctly. However, that's caused issues uh, in that the shareholders of the target, the shareholders of Axo Nobel actually do believe that the offer is fair and therefore they are prepared to sell. Uh, but that's causing issues with the directors, ultimately to the point whereby the CEO has been challenged, and I think the CEO has now resigned, uh, and maybe that deal will go through in the sometime near future, or could potentially just be called off entirely, because it's really gone through and been a bit of a distraction for PPG and Axo Nobel, because obviously PPG have tried to put all their attention into making the acquisition, and Axo Nobel are putting in all their attention to, to fending off the acquisition, so being a bit of an issue and then also i think we mentioned facebook and whatsapp that was a, a relatively straightforward acquisition if not something that just shocked the market a little bit in terms of the the merging of the two if you like uh internet giants uh, and also there as well the, the values of money that were involved okay uh so i think that that brings about the first issue from The, the predator's perspective, isn't it? Okay. Uh, looking there at how much you are prepared to pay. Okay. You know, are you prepared to pay an amount? And also there is the target prepared to sell. Okay. So you've got to make sure that you're prepared to pay the right amount. And that the target is prepared, therefore, to, to take that offer and sell the shares to you. Okay. So, with Facebook and WhatsApp, it was it was a fairly straightforward situation. That the, the amount that Facebook were prepared to pay was an offer that the target shareholders of WhatsApp were prepared to accept and therefore sell those shares. Okay. Uh, but like with PPG and Axo Noble, uh, then you know Axo Noble are prepared to sell from a management perspective, but from a shareholder perspective, they are prepared to sell. Okay. So. It's caused, as I said, some issues. Okay, the other issue that I suppose you've then got to go through and consider, from a, from a predator perspective, it is the valuation, isn't it? Okay, you've got to be able to go through there and value 
the target. So we'll go through there and start to think about various different methods. Uh, we'll begin to look at the dividend valuation model when we come to valuing a minority holding. Uh, but, you know, if you're looking to gain control, uh, we're likely to go through there and start using other methods such as an earnings method uh, because your control means that you are entitled to not just the dividend but to the earnings of that entity. You control those earnings, don't we? So, therefore, it seems more reasonable if we are getting control and buying large numbers of a listed business to go through there and use an earnings-based method. Okay, But, again, that valuation is going to be subject to looking at what happens in the future, uh, what are the sustainable level of earnings. Uh, we also need to look at a sustainable or, or appropriate price-earnings ratio. From a dividend perspective, what are the level of dividends going to be? Are they sustainable? Are they going to grow? Are they going to remain constant? What required rate of return do the shareholders require? So that can make the, the valuation quite tricky. Okay. Once you've got that valuation, again, that's the issue that you've then got, isn't it? Is that valuation, what is the target prepared to accept based upon what you are prepared to pay? It's like when you go through there and... and buy or sell a house isn't it you know much, how much you are prepared to go through and pay but is the seller prepared to accept that amount of money okay when we go through there and look at these acquisitions of the target by the predator most of the gains are actually there made by the target shareholders okay because we need to make the offer attractive to them and by making the attractive offer to them it therefore means that the predator shareholders can sometimes lose out ever so slightly but they're happy knowing that in the future they will make many more gains as the combined entity is much larger can maybe take advantage of cheaper interest uh, there's more confidence in that business the larger it is with the market uh, there's more customers we can make more profit so Short-term pain for, for long-term gain from the predator's perspective. Uh, other bits you need to think about as well uh, is going through. You've got your valuation. Uh, what about the finance now from a predator's perspective? Where do you get the money from? Okay. Uh, when Facebook went through there and acquired WhatsApp, uh, what did they go through there and value WhatsApp at? What did they pay overall, roughly? What do you think? Millions of dollars? A bit higher, billions. Okay, that they paid billions of dollars for WhatsApp. Uh, how many billion? No, not one or two. Nineteen. Yes, let's say that again. Nineteen billion dollars. Okay. Yeah, mind blowing. Okay, Facebook paid WhatsApp nineteen billion dollars. Now, did Facebook have nineteen billion dollars just lying around to, to pay? No. Okay, uh, they they financed it with a little bit of cash. Okay, I think about four or five billion was cash, and then the rest of it was the in terms of the issue of shares within Facebook to the existing shareholders of the target. Okay, and by by doing that, cash and share based if you like, offer, that made it attractive to the target shareholders because it then meant that they had an interest in the ongoing business. Uh, I also think that the majority shareholder in WhatsApp was also then given a position on the board of Facebook. So again, they have an ongoing interest in the, the enlarged business which combines their, their original business that they went through and set up. Okay, Again, if you've not got the cash, you can offer shares uh, or cash and share offer. And again, maybe if you haven't got the cash, potentially you could go through there and borrow it. Okay, uh, so an acquisition funded there via debt. Okay, uh, just going back and thinking about uh, the the WhatsApp acquisition by Facebook, uh, four or five billion was shares. The remaining 15, 14 billion, sorry, four or five billion was cash. The remaining fifteen or fourteen billion was their shares. The market reacted well to that. Okay, and therefore. Uh, uh, the valuation in the end was a bit more than 19 billion because as the shares in Facebook increased based upon the positive slants of the acquisition of WhatsApp, uh, therefore the shareholders in WhatsApp, that target company, earned more Okay, uh, from the way that finance deal was structured. Okay, uh, The share price in Facebook rose in anticipation 
of that future acquisition and therefore when I as a WhatsApp shareholder, I say I, you know, if only it was me, uh, when I as a WhatsApp shareholder received the shares in Facebook, they were worth more than what they were when the bid was initially put into the public domain. Okay, but let's just say you are the target company, you are WhatsApp, uh, you are Axo Nobel, you are Cadbury's, uh, you are not wanting that acquisition to happen. So what could you go through and do? Well, you need some shark repellents, okay? Uh, and those shark repellents can be in various different forms. Uh, you could go through there and appeal to the Competitions Commission uh, and say, well, look, this isn't fair. It's reducing the competition out there. Uh, a long time ago in the UK, there were supermarkets, one of which was Safeway, uh, and there was an acquisition of Safeway. I think Tesco tried to buy Safeway, but the Competition Commission ruled that it was unfair because that would have given Tesco too much market share. Again, uh, Tesco's have recently bought Book of Foods, and again, that's being taken to the Competition Commission in the UK to ensure that there is enough competition available elsewhere uh, so that Tesco's don't become the number one dominant player in the wholesale food industry, okay, uh, and grocery industry as well, okay. Uh, so you can appeal to the Competition Commission. It's not fair, don't let them take us over. Uh, May work, may not work. Don't forget the Competition Commission is working on behalf of the local governments and the local government wants investment, wants job creation, so that they're usually quite open to these acquisitions happening. But there we go. Uh, so what you could go through and do is look for a white knight instead. Uh, so your white knight comes in shining armed with a big flag and says, right, I will save you. Uh, so somebody else effectively comes in with, with, with another offer, uh, a better, more favourable offer, whether that's as a, a better value, whether that's a better form of finance package that's being put together. Uh, but your white knight is somebody else coming along to save the day, okay, riding into town to, to fend off the current predator, okay. Uh, alternatively, uh, as part of that white knight, the white knight could be a management buyout. So getting your existing management to, to get a finance package together to go through there and buy the business from the current shareholders and then run the business themselves, you know, with Axo Nobel. I suppose that's a potential idea, isn't it? But although it would be a huge amount of money that would be required, you know, the Axo Nobel shareholders wanted the acquisition to go ahead. Uh, the directors and the management didn't. So maybe they could buy out the shareholders and run the business themselves. Okay. It tends not to be on that grand scale, okay, of buying large listed businesses in MBO, okay. It tends to be much smaller businesses that can then be grown quite rapidly, okay. Uh, the other alternative that you have as well, I think, is referred to as, as a poison pill, okay. Great names, aren't they? You know, shark repellent is the, the general overall name. Uh, a white knight, a poison pill, okay. Uh, a poison pill is whereby the, the target share or the target company goes through there and introduces a new set of shares within the business that if the target company is then acquired, those shares are then issued at a particularly high price that therefore then puts off the predator ever so slightly because they know if they acquire the business, they then will go through there and have to issue shares to the older shareholders at quite higher value to what they are expecting to pay to buy the shares in the first place. And therefore that will dilute the ownership of the business and could also as well have pricing issues in terms of maybe reducing or having an impact detrimentally on the price, okay? Uh, so, I know there are issues that you need to consider from, from both perspectives, from a predator perspective, from, from a target perspective. I'll go through there, have a read through the notes, okay? Uh, I think we're focused pretty much on the predator. From the target perspective, we've thrown in there bits and pieces in terms about uh, how we can fend off that acquisition, there's plenty to go through there and have a think about, okay? Uh, they're not likely to be numerical questions. They're likely to be narrative questions. So it could be that those select all style questions appear here, which means that it can be quite challenging. So make sure that you've gone through all of the theory, all of the book work, and then practice the questions. If you can do that, you should be okay with this part of the syllabus.